This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The facts that will be presented are true. Scientists representing the world's foremost research centers took part in the examination of the evidence. Welcome to Paranormal Guys. I'm Chris. I'm Jen. And together, we amount for half the body mass of any room we're in. I thought you were going to say we're a pair. Together, we're a pair. Uh huh. Separate, we're not. Is that what kind of fruit you are? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of jeans I buy. Pear. Pear bottom. Or do they make those? Bottom or do they make those for men? I don't. I think so. Pear bottom. I mean, what's you that know, even mean? Uh, something about your butt. I don't know. Well, anyway, hi, fruit. welcome to Paranormal Guys. <laughs> hi. Hello, everybody. All right, so how's it going, Chadwick? It is going fine, sir, and how are you on this wonderful day? Hey, you know, same old, same old. It's mm -hmm. a lot cooler than it has been. This is true. Makes for less sweatiness. That's right. I'm hoping it stays that way for the Rest activities. of the year. <laughs> well, the activities that are coming up. Speaking of activities, Chad. Yes. What, what are we doing? We're going to be going to a little place in West Virginia where some unusual Mountain things Mama. have happened. Yeah, that's true. Oh. And uh, I think <laughs> we're going to be attending an anniversary edition. Yes. Of uh, the... If you if you tuned into the last show and I didn't know what I was talking about, yes, this is the 50th anniversary of the sightings of Richard Gere. Oh. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Mothman. Oh, gerbil? <laughs> Mothman. Habit trail? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Chad and I are heading out to uh, Point Pleasant in West Virginia this coming weekend for the Old Mothman Festival. True that. It's the uh, 50th anniversary of the sightings and reign of terror of the Mothman. That's right. We're <laughs> going to take a nice bus tour of the old TNT facility. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Oi. TNT. You think they would get disturbed if I brought that song along on the tour bus and just played it on repeat? I think so. TNT. I think you'd be asked to leave, hmm. ejected. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have to go. Oh, uh, so yeah, it should be a fun time. And hey, Pongite Nation. Yes. If you're a friend of us on Facebook, I'm thinking that Chad and I may try to do at least once while we're at the Old Mothman Festival, one of those swanky new fan dangled. Uh, live streaming videos on yeah. Facebook. Chris tells me it can be done, and my face may or may not break the internet, so it'll be fine. Well, Kim Kardashian's butt, your face. No, she gets a lot more likes on her butt than I would on my face. Now, don't sell yourself short, Chad. Well, I mean, I'm your average. Your face has a lot in common with Kim Kardashian's butt. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> well. I mean, Kanye probably likes it. Yeah, so he'd like my face, too? Maybe. Hmm. We both have big fat cheeks. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a uh, friend of ours on Facebook, be sure to watch uh, Saturday, what day is that, Chad? The 17th. Yes. At any given moment, yes, there sir. may be live Paranormal Guys activities. It could it could happen. It could be some live weird paranormal thing that happens and we have to hurry up and let you know about it. Who knows? That's right. Chad may have an emergency porta potty stop. Could be. That's thrilling. We may find Mothman cookies. It's explosive <laughs> diarrhea. Who knows? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on from the old Mothman Festival this weekend, Chad. Uh-huh. September 24th, 
which is a week from this coming Saturday. Yes. What are we doing? We're going to be attending Paracon. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. That's right. In Brandenburg, Kentucky, yes. they're having the first annual, which no, you can't say that, the inaugural Paracon. Mm -hmm. Paranormal Festival. Yeah. Par Paracon. <laughs> Paranormal Para Convention. Convention. So we'll have some neat stuff. We'll have our giveaway items. Chad has put together quite a nice little uh, paranormal investigation kit. For experts. Why is it for experts? Well, you don't have to be an expert to use it, but if you have, if you want to aspire oh, okay. to being an expert, this kit will help you get So there. it's the next level. It is. It's the next level. Unlike the one that I've put together. Which is the... <laughs> which is the old-timey guy looking for ghost kit. Which will consist of uh, something to the effect of a pad of paper, a pencil, some talcum powder. It's got a rock and compass. And a compass. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't, don't sell it short. It'll still be pretty nifty. You will still perhaps be able to document a ghost with this kit. This is true. But not electronically. Yeah. All in fun. And also, while at Paracon, if you were one of the first five Pongites that come up, to the Paranormal Guys table, with the code phrase, you get a little prize. This is true. And once again, Chad's going to tell you right now what that code phrase is. And the code phrase would be, Wolfman's got nards. That's the last time you'll hear it, before Paracon. That's right. If you walk up to our table and you repeat the code phrase, and Wolfman. you are one of the first five people. Wolfman's got nards. We will have a spectacular Paranormal Guys gift for you. Yeah, true. <laughs> very, very true. And I believe, like I said last show, don't get excited. It's not going to be like a bar of gold. Or, well. Or, but it'll be something kind of cool. It's true. And uh, we're also going to have yummy candy on our table. There will be candy. Not that cheap crap either. No, it's like actual like Milky Way. Like there's probably some chocolate. Starburst. There's probably some good stuff that'll give you... I don't know. Cavity. Happiness. Sugar allergies. Yeah, sure. well, no. Like me. Well, you've got the Wilford Brimley's. Sugar allergies. Sure. But yeah, it should be a fun time down there in Brandenburg. I think so. There might even be a dog man appearance at our table. What? Could be. You never know. Are you talking about Gizzy? No. Oh. <laughs> I mean an actual, you know, bona fide our man with a dog's head. That is true. That might scare small children. If we're lucky. Sweet. More candy for everybody else. Not for me. No. no yeah, Unless you want to see a paranormal guy in a coma. Paracoma guy. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Next couple of weeks are going to be a little busy. They will be. Big paranormal guys events. Mm -hmm. So be watching out for those. And like I said, kind of like our Facebook page. You might get to see Chad and I do something really dumb. Well, you should like our Facebook page anyway. The chance of getting to see me and Chad do something dumb is... That's even a bigger, bigger draw. That's true. It's very true. So, Chad. Yes. Let's go on over to the Paro News Desk. <laughs> Are we now? <laughs> and we have a Paro <laughs> News <laughs> Stories. <laughs> Chad, do you have a news story? I do. <laughs> go for I it, buddy. Do. Let me ask you something, Chris. Yes. One of the uh, cryptozoological monsters that you enjoy the most. Chupacabras. Uh, yes. But what's what's more of a classic? Mothman. Well, yeah. Let's think more aquatic. Jersey Devil. That's not very aquatic. Lake Manitou Monster. How about the Loch Ness Monster? Oh, yeah. Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, you know. I've heard of him. Yeah. Her. Nessie, her, her. She. She's been around. I've heard of the... She, she, the Loch Ness Monster. Yes. Uh, well, the Loch Ness <laughs> Monster, there may be a photo that shows Nessie may have had Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. No, wait a minute. Twins. What? Yep. This is by Mark Holdy. And after decades of alleged sightings and possible appearances, this could be the photo which proves Nessie has been breeding. What? Through this. It's an immaculate conception. Through that. Uh, this and that are their names. Not really. It's the creature that terrorized the waters of one of the UK's deepest lakes for decades. But now it turns out Loch Ness could actually be hiding two monsters. A new photograph snapped at the Scottish Lock has revealed what looks like a duo of swimming animals in its depths side by side. 
Ian Campbell was on a bicycle ride with his son and a family friend when he spotted two big creatures apparently swimming across the lock together. The 56-year-old, who says he's not a man given to flights of fancy, is convinced that what he saw and pictured from around 400 meters away were both around 10 meters in length. In one of the pictures, it appears that whatever was in the water was propelling itself along using its two flippers, one at each side of its body. If what Mr. Campbell pictured was a type of hitherto undiscovered creature, then it could mean that the Loch Ness Monster has been breeding, or, on the day he saw it, swimming around with an offspring or mate. Mr. Campbell was around five miles south of the village of... Mr. Campbell was around five miles south of the village of Drum the Drocket on the western shores of Loch Ness while on a 40-mile bicycle ride between Fort Augustus and Inverness on hill tracks on August 21st with his son, Fraser, 13, mm. and Frazier. family friend, Mrs. Karen McPhee, 54, when the two shapes appeared in the water. Mr. Campbell's son also saw the creatures, but Mrs. McPhee was cycling some way behind and did not get a good look. Was that their nanny? Mrs. Well, nanny Mrs. McPhee. McPhee. Oh. Uh, Mr. Campbell says they watched for around 30 seconds before losing sight of the objects, but he managed to take a photograph using the camera on his phone. He says at the time we saw it, we had stopped for a rest and to admire the view. It seemed to appear suddenly from nowhere. I said to my son, what is that in the water? He said to me that it looked like a big animal. I said, I think you're right, and grabbed my camera phone to take a picture. We watched for around 30 seconds before it disappeared from view, and by that time Karen had caught up and saw it for around five seconds. We talked about it afterwards, obviously, and we just had no idea what it could be. I would estimate they were 10 meters in length, and I took the picture from around 400 meters away. I was saying to my son that we had just seen the Loch Ness Monster, and he was saying, the hell you say. Is that what he said? No, actually he oh. said, yes, right. No. Oh. Mr. Campbell of <laughs> Tainolt Argyll. Now, I'm hoping I see these things right. Probably there's going to be some Scottish listeners that are angry with me. Well. Tainolt Argyll, who works as Environmental <laughs> Health Regulatory <laughs> Officer for Argyll and Brute Council. Argyll. For Argyll and Brute Council. Council. <laughs> Bruce Campbell. And Brute Council. What are you even saying? I don't know. It's Scottish. I don't know. It's like reading road signs in Minnesota. I don't know what. It's just a bunch of letters and girls and all those. Anyway, uh, who works as an environmental health regulatory officer for Argyll and Brute Council, said he knew the area well and it was a calm day and he had never seen anything like that before. I am convinced that what I saw was two creatures, he said. The Legend of the Loch Ness Monster first came to worldwide attention in 1933, but the earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appears in the life of St. Columba. But the earliest report of the monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appears in the life of St. Columba by Adamnan, Adamnan, written in the 7th century AD. <laughs> so, there you have it. The Loch Ness Monster. So Nessie's got him a wee little lassie. Looks like I may have a couple of babies. Babies? They're babies. <laughs> He's like a baby you got Get there. in my belly. <laughs> so Loch Ness Monster babies. That's right. wonder if they dress them up in the same little matching sailor outfits. Little sailor hats. Yeah. And that's sweet. If you get there just the right time, they pop their heads out of the water and they go, mm -hmm. Come swim with us, Chad. <laughs> Forever and ever. Well, I see you're staring at me and my children. Because <laughs> I'm a Loch Ness Monster. Do you think there's Loch Ness Monster discrimination? Probably. Loch Ness Monster can't just, like, hang out on and not be noticed and pointed at. You know he was Jack the Ripper. I know. The Loch Ness <laughs> Monster could indeed be Jack the Ripper. Yeah, if... For those of you that have seen that know what I'm talking about... Amazon Women on the Moon. Awesome. If you have not seen that or know what I'm talking about, get on YouTube and what would you Just search Just type for? in Loch Ness Monster Jack the Ripper. It'll come right up. And you will not be sorry. <laughs> no. It's one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, you're a big boy. You're a big boy, aren't you? Oh, so Loch Ness Monster, like having some kids. It's true. Out there multiplying like it's a math class. Well, good. It's... <laughs> he took the picture from how far away? 400 meters. Yeah, it's all Which metric. is, you know, There's 1,200 feet. Meter stick. Which is what? Like a fifth of a mile. Yeah. So And it's with a cell phone. 
smartphone. Oh, so, you know, they have so, the best zoom lens I possible. Mean, not one of them fancy Celestron spotter scopes. That could probably be like a aircraft carrier out there playing around, and it'd be like, no, no, it's the Loch Ness Monster. Logs. Look at my picture. It's just logs. We spotted the two mini Nessies right down there near this convenient exit where the sewage comes out. Oh. I think they might have been some very special logs. That are stinky. Ooh. He had... <laughs> He looked at me with those peanut eyes and those that corn kernel smile, and I knew it was a monster. His teeth were very yellow. <laughs> he had those yellow <laughs> teeth. Uh, what's wrong with me? I'm going to die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I have a brain tumor. <sighs> so, Loch Ness Monster having kids. That's true. That's amazing. A couple of them. I hope they know what they're in for. Mm-hmm. One's bad enough. Having twins. Yep. Good luck. Yep. They go to a career school. Learn a trade. Learn a good trade. That's right. Undersea welding. Well, Chad. Yes, sir. Loch Ness Monster in Scotland having kids. Mm-hmm. A little something going on in China. Uh-oh. They found four new wasp species. Holy crap. <laughs> this is from LiveScience.com. And Richa Malhotra is the contributor of this story. came out September 8th of 2016, so this is hot off the presses. Yeah, this is some new info. New info. This is all new. This is four more ways you get a painful sting. Four species of parasitoid wasps have been discovered in northwest China, a new study reports. The new species belongs to the genus Gasturepteon. These wasps have slender bodies and inflated club-shaped hind legs. They also have elongated necks and keep their abdomens raised and hind legs dangling during their slow, quiet flight. Their heads have a satin-like sheen and long eyes that extend almost to their mouth, the researchers said. (laughs) The four new species, G. bicoloratum, G. hangushii, G. panaceum, and G. shangai, have body covering that resembles black leather with grooves and stitches. Now, have all these G's gotten their street cred? They do. Nice. G. Sting. The bugs range in size from 0.3 inches, which is 8 millimeters, mm-hmm. to 13 millimeters long. And the females are typically larger than the males. The new found species are parasitoid wasps whose larvae are parasites that kill their hosts. Adults hover outside the nests of solitary bees while females hover to find an opportunity to sneak their own eggs into solitary bee nests, the males typically linger in search of females. Using a long tube-like, tube-like organ called an ovipositor, the female lays eggs inside the bee nest. The emerging larvae feed on bee eggs and larvae and the food reserves of the nest. The young wasps pupate in their host nest and emerge as adults in the spring. Wow. Adult wasps can be locally abundant at times, particularly when they are feeding on pollen and nectar at flowers, said Zhang Li Tan, an entomologist in the College of Life Sciences at Northwest University in China. But they are not often encountered and in many regions of the world are rarely collected. A total of 28 species of Gasteruption were known from China before the new finds. Tan's team discovered four new species in the mountain region of China's Shangzi and Ningxi provinces. Tan lives near the Qinling Mountains in Shangzi, and every weekend during spring and summer, she would drive there with her students to sample wasps mm. and other sordid delicacies. Yeah, I hear they're delicious. <laughs> I'm not surprised to find four new species, Tan told Live Science in an email. She added that there are likely more wasp species waiting to be found, but it is not easy to identify new species, Tan said. (laughs) A combination of characteristics such as the shape of the head and legs, length of the ovipositor, skin patterns, body color, and wing pattern, and color were used. And these findings were published online August 23rd in the journal Zookies. 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 Mm. So, exactly what the world needed, Chad? More wasps. Four more stinging insects. Wasps are jerks. Uh, now, I heard you mention something about the A-team in that story. Because I heard you say something about B. Eggs Baracus was in there. And he pities the fool. <laughs> if I um, act like it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk about the Loch Ness Monster Babies? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, four new... Uh, luckily, these are parasitoid wasps instead of... Uh, the single-satoid ones. 
No, he makes a big difference. Instead of, you know, like normal wasps, mm-hmm. the parasite or the solitary wasps usually mm-hmm. don't mess with you. Yeah. That's but, good. And I they're mean, in China, so. Yeah, I mean, I feel better already. No, I hope. A lot of stuff comes from China, though. Can't a wasp catch a ride? Uh, I, I mean, maybe. In some of those electronics you buy? Yeah. <laughs> Off of AliExpress. Whatever. <laughs> You know, finally find the drone. I can't I don't know. I don't think it might be packed full of. I don't know if it works well though, because it takes so long for it to get here. The wasp's probably gonna die before it gets. Oh, here. these are new ones. They live forever. These are the ones you like put underwater and they stop struggling. And you think, oh, it's fine. They come out and they come back to life and stab you in the and face, sting you to death. Yeah, with their butt while they're cussing. And... Yeah, I don't like sting anymore. Let's say, let's say that they butt stab you. Butt stab? Yeah, they butt stab. They don't sting. Butt stab sounds a lot more dramatic. Like <laughs> that wasp just butt stabbed me on my arm and now it's swollen. I can't feel my fingers and my arm hurts real bad <laughs> fair enough i like it sure so yeah Loch Ness monster babies and parasitoid wasps in the news is that all from the paro news desk the paro news desk nice with your paro news stories <laughs> paro news coming up tonight on the show uh we're going back to our roots mm-hmm and originally, we, uh, when we did the show, we started, you know, we wanted to keep it kind of local, mm-hmm. Indiana, Kentucky. And so we did that for a few shows, and we kind of branched out. But tonight, we're bringing her home. So we're going back Kentucky and a proud? That's right. All right. What's going to be the topic of our show this evening? Well, we kind of touched on one or more of these on the uh, couple of the shows we did in the past. But tonight, we are concentrating on the unnaturally large... Snakes of Indiana. Giant snakes. Welcome back. Hello, hello. And like we mentioned a minute ago, giant snakes of Indiana. Great big old snakes. And apparently, I don't know how this works, Chad, because anything you read about paranormal Indiana, cryptids in Indiana, Uh they all make a sideways, like, glancing comment of, well, Indiana has more than its share of really big snakes, but then you can only find stories in about three or four of them. Well, so I don't know if three or four constitutes more than our fair share number of large snakes, or if there's just a bunch that they're just like, eh, somebody saw a big snake. What if it's three or four stories, but it attacked a whole bunch of people? Like a serial snake? Yeah, like a serial snake. (laughs) I think that's made by Post, right? I think so. I don't know, but I did uncover five good old down-on-the-farm Indiana-grown snakes. Yep. Indiana fried snakes. Growing stories. big on the farm. They do. True that. So the first one we're going to talk about tonight, Chad. Yes, I'm excited. It's a snake large enough that apparently it can make you swerve off the road. Hey, hold on a minute. I got a question for you. Yes. If a snake goes to the bathroom, oh, wow. Well. Yes. Does it matter what sex is illustrated on the door for what bathroom needs to go to? Is there like a his or hers bathroom? So the first story, Chad. Yes. <laughs> moving right along. Yes, sir. Comes from Greensburg, Indiana. Greensburg. From, from October 8th of 1920. Hello to our listening friends in Greensburg. From 1920. And that are still alive from <laughs> 1920. Prominent citizens in the southern part of Decatur County declare that stories regarding the depredations by a monster snake are not fables. Depredations. And stuff. And stuff. They declare the reptile, reported to be from 25 to 35 feet long, 
and proportionately large as to girth. This is old-timey language. It is. <laughs> has been seen several times in the community during the last few days. Hmm. 25 to 35 feet long, Chad. That's a pretty long snake. Work has been virtually abandoned in some sections, and men armed with guns are searching for the monster. A calf belonging to Robert Bishop is said to have been devoured by the snake, and the entire community professes intense alarm. Okay. Eating baby cows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's apparently snakes like veal. They do. Some residents advance the theory that the reptile escaped from some passing show. <laughs> Carnies. <laughs> Dude, was the Rocky Horror Picture Show around back then? Others point to stories emanating from Sullivan and Green Counties, many miles distant, of a serpent of similar proportions which is declared to have ditched automobiles in encounters on the highways. So he stole the car, he ditched it, ditched and then it. he ran away on tail. They'll never catch me, coppers! I'll <laughs> be out of here in no time. <laughs> the Sullivan Green County reptile was described at widely separated points when within a space of a few hours, and it received much publicity in the newspapers. Hmm. So there you go. Crazy snake, and like you brought up, either way you put it, he's either running people off the road, Mm -hmm. or he's still in your car and joyriding. Wow. He's like a real hardcore criminal. He is. It's one of those 1920s gangster snakes. Yeah. Well. We gotta steal your car, see? See? Look here, (laughs) see? Look into my eyes, see? Look. I won't bite you as long as you give me the keys. (sighs) See? Yeah. Crawls in through the tailpipe. (laughs) Surprise, it's me. Hey, guess what? I'm taking your car. Mm, giant snakes. You're cars. a mighty fine dame. <laughs> well. Mm. So there you go. Mm-hmm. One big snake of Indiana. Well, well, I got a pretty good snake story here, too. You want to hear it? I do. Everybody out there like to hear it? Yes. Because this one here <laughs> is the legend of Big Jim. Big Jim. Big Jim. This is from strangemag.com. And this one goes back a century. A century ago, stories of a giant rattlesnake were striking fear in the hearts of the area. Big Jim was reported as the terror of the Wabash, a monster rattler ten feet long, or longer in some estimates, or estimates. He made his (laughs) home at Rattlesnake Bluff on the Little Wabash, 12 miles north of Carmi, Illinois, although he reportedly ranged up and down the Wabash Valley into Indiana, so see, it is relevant to Indiana. (laughs) The snake was first noticed in the spring of 1881 when loggers went to log the Skillet Fork Bottoms. Wow. The Skillet Fork Bottoms. Skillet Fork Bottom. Yep. According to the story of this confrontation told with great detail in 1908 by the Vincennes commercial, the loggers were driven to shelter and rain in the bluff overhanging the river. One man from the crew was sent for firewood, but he came back terrified and empty-handed. The logger, who was named Big Jim, reported seeing a great demon prowling the bluff. Captain Ed Ballard, in charge of the crew, angrily ordered the man back to his task. (laughs) Minutes later, a scream was heard from top of the bluff, and Jim hurtled down the bluff into the flooded river. He was never seen again. Oh, my. Though an extensive search was made of the river the next day, more men ascended the bluff but heard what they said sounded like a thousand rattles. So it was like they were attacked by an army of babies. <laughs> Rain or not, the survivors boated to the Illinois banks of the Wabash in record time. The logging business in the area was set back by continued stories of the giant snake. Also, other excursions of this monster rattler, now called Big Jim in honor of his victim, Big Bad Jim, that's right, were reported in succeeding years. Near the bluff, one farmer looked into his chicken yard and saw his best Plymouth Rock rooster. No. Best one. Staring eyeball to eyeball with a giant snake. He emptied a shotgun at the snake and it disappeared. (laughs) Accidentally hit his rooster instead. He hit his giant snake cloaking device. He said his rooster was never the same again. (laughs) We used to have coffee and vittles in the morning and now he couldn't get up and eat that early. He wouldn't crow. Shakes. (laughs) He wouldn't crow no more. Uh, In the same locale, cattle and hogs were also reported bitten. Then a group of turkey and squirrel hunters, including Knox County Sheriff Lee Staley, saw what they said was Big Jim on a log sunning himself. They could see where he had taken his bikini top off because he had those Big Jim tan lines. Uh, They blasted away at him, interrupting his nap, but apparently not hurting him. (laughs) Son of a... (laughs) Like, what the hell? 
a <laughs> country school four miles from Rattlesnake Bluff. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's your problem. Well, it seems to me he should have been there. Yeah, I mean, it's their fault for building the school by Rattlesnake Bluff. <laughs> That's right. I should tell you something. It's like we know one, we know two things. Rattlesnakes live here, and they're really good at cards. Bluff, mm. bluff. You, you get that? Yeah. For our listeners out there that are far more intelligent than Chris, I am appalled by his ignorance. Thank you. You're I, I missed that last I week. I know you did. Or two weeks ago. I know I didn't do it on purpose. I was wondering if anybody would notice, but uh, no one cares. No one me. cares, but yeah. me. You. You're the only one that griped about it. <laughs> uh, well. Anyway, Big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Rattlesnake Bluff. Rattlesnake Bluff, that's cool. right. Yep. Uh, Big Jim was spotted nearby, and the frightened teacher gathered the students inside the school, shut the blinds, hid out until evening. When parents came to see what was going on, school was dismissed for the rest of the year. The re- rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That <laughs> that year, there was a bunch of kids that were a little bit subpar as far as their education. Yeah. No. Oh, wow. Yep. You're the snake. One area farmer reported the snake's love for his blackberry patch. The farmer, William <laughs> Udi, said his bull tried to horn the critter. <laughs> well. What? Yeah, he tried to horn him, apparently, and <laughs> came out the loser to the snake's fangs. A large cage put over the hole to what was supposedly Big Jim's lair was found bent and twisted. Oh. A price was put on the snake's head, and fearful farmers began wearing high boots to ward off attacking <laughs> snakes. A snake, Big Jim, of course, frightened a team of stagecoach horses near Canterville, Illinois, sending one frightened traveler up a tree. Boo, it's me, Big Jim. Boo, hiss, <laughs> boo, I'm a snake. Uh, dynamiters blew holes over Rattlesnake Bluff, maybe sending thousands of snakes to their deaths, but reportedly not Big Jim. <laughs> Big Jim had gone on vacation to the Smokies. No, not really. In 1908, after more than a quarter of a century, there was still a rattlesnake mania north of Carmi, and all reports of snakes were attributed to the legendary serpent. On the W.H. Thompson farm in southwestern Sullivan County, farmhand John Basecomb heard a commotion in the pig pen. A <laughs> boar had a giant <laughs> rattlesnake in his jaws, close enough to the head that the snake couldn't get in a knockout punch. By the time he had returned with a rifle, the other hogs in the pen were in the fray, stomping and biting at the writhing snake. Basecomb finally got a clear shot, and the snake was finished. Oh. Pigs that were involved in the assault said that it tasted a lot like chicken. Basecomb mounted the skin, which measured a terrifying 12 feet, 5 inches long, and had 29 rattles. Whether Big Jim was an unknown species of serpent or just a big rattler, the legend of the terror of the Wabash thankfully died that day in Sullivan County pig pen. Oh, poor Big Jim. Poor Big Jim. He's just a snake. He got stomped to death by them piggies. Wow, I'm glad he was on vacation in the Smokies, though, when they were blowing up Rattlesnake Bluff. Yeah, because at least he got to come back to get eaten by a line by you know, pigs. Like, what have you done? You've exploded <laughs> my home. That's right. And then Destro showed up, helped him out. And... Mm-hmm. So Big Jim, big, 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 big Rattlesnake. Great Big Jim. So Big Bad Jim, or just mm-hmm. Big Jim. Big Jim. <laughs> I think he was just misunderstood. Because in none of that, I don't think any of that was proven that he was a bad guy. I don't think it was either. Because did he kill the the rooster? No, he just stared he him stared down. at him. So you, when that guy came around, he didn't know whether Big Jim was running through the yard, get somewhere mm. else, and that rooster was picking on him. Yep. And Big Jim was like, dude, stop. Big snake, eye to eye with a cock. He starts shooting at him. What? So then the guy starts shooting at him. You know, they they blow up Rattlesnake Bluff. Yep. Call in the A-team. Like we said, you built the school by Rattlesnake Bluff. Mm-hmm. You not, should know they're snakes. It's not just a catchy name. Yep. <laughs> it's like, hey, guess what? We're going to go rafting out in Shark Death, you know, whatever, Cove, and yeah. enjoy hey, it. Hey, let's go swimming in Killer Shark Reef. Hey, anybody interested in taking a little dip in Piranha Bay? Yeah. Sounds fun. It does sound fun. Wow. Moving on, Chad. Yes, sir. We go from snakes that knock cars off the road, mm-hmm. really big rattlesnakes that may or may not actually be doing anything bad. You know, I was disappointed that there wasn't a single snake in that story that decided to get on a plane. Anyway, we're mm-hmm. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. To the fiery snake of Alexander, Indiana. Ooh, fiery. What happens after you eat really spicy Mexican food? Fiery snake. Snake had to go to the river. 
<laughs> and for some reason, he has really bright yellow eyes. He did. He, he sh- this would get... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> this one comes to us from the Ogden Standard Examiner from Ogden, Utah, from July 1st of 1893. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to point out that even though it's from Ogden, Utah, for whatever reason... It's a story about a snake from Alexander, Indiana. <laughs> well, they do write stories about other places. This is from Mark Weston, a farmer living near the town of Alexander, Indiana. And his story recounts. Just after dark, night before last, I had occasion to go out to the barn to look after the horses. A public highway passes within yards of my house, and the barn is built around 20 rods from the house due south and somewhat nearer the road. So middle map draw that out mm-hmm. <laughs> 20 rods from the house the hell is a rod it's one of those little uh atmospheric beasts that float around oh they fly through the air yeah you get 20 of those together and you measure it out mm. i started from the house in the direction of the barn and had gone perhaps half the distance when i noticed something playing along the ground that looked like a tremendous fiery snake wow the object crossed my path, and as it did so, I felt the air grow much colder, and a peculiar moaning sound arose, like the sighing of the wind through the trees. Only it was loud enough to drown a maniac's voice when he would shout. Was it a giant fuse? Yes. <laughs> then I felt something come over me like electricity, and I became motionless as though I had grown fast to the ground. I was terribly scared, but I never lost the use of my hands or legs through fear. Though there was something peculiar in the air that simply paralyzed me. When the thing had got perhaps fifty feet from me going west, it turned and came back. And as it did so, the moaning sound changed to a shrill whistle, something like a locomotive would make. And when it got just in front of me, it took a course directly away from me toward the barn. Psych! Slip over here. I'm going this direction. Ha <laughs> ha. Screw you, buddy. It traveled very rapidly and looked like a larger ragged streak of fire, perhaps 30 feet long and 18 inches in diameter. The thing reached the barn and in almost an instant ran directly up in front of the building and onto the roof. I expected every moment to see the barn burst into flames, but it did not. The great fiery snake ran with great rapidity all over the building in almost every direction, up and down, crosswise in every way. I suppose a thousand times it did this. It then came out the front of the building and elevated itself, and it stood straight on its tail, fully 30 feet in the air, Chad. Holy shnikes. I was perfectly conscious all the time, but try as I would, I could not move from the spot. After the thing had remained in an upright position for, I presume, three or four minutes, there was a sudden explosion like the discharge of a cannon, and the thing completely disappeared in a burst of red snake flesh... Oh, wait, no, sorry. Discharge of a cannon, and the thing disappeared entirely. With the disappearance of the strange phenomenon, I felt a shock like the first one I had felt, and at the same time I gained control of my limbs. I hastened to the house, told my wife what I had seen, and she thought I was crazy. Well, hey. I mean, as long as he gained control of his limbs and right. lost control of his bowels, and he could finally get his fingers unlocked from around that bottle of whiskey. <laughs> she thought I was crazy, but upon my insisting, she consented to accompany me to investigate the matter. At which point I said, Snake, come back. Here's your supper. <laughs> no, I made that up. Honey, I want you to come outside and see my burning snake. Would you like to see the biggest snake you've ever seen? Well, mm-hmm. it was a DeLorean. What? It was a DeLorean. Snake? Yeah. Burning trail. DeLorean. Back to the future. You can imagine our surprise upon reaching the <laughs> You can imagine our surprise upon reaching the barn to find it covered with a remarkable network resembling large ropes of ice. Imagine. Frozen. They appeared to pass around the building in exactly the way the fiery monster had passed. It was not ice, however, Chad. It seemed to be more of a crystal for it would not melt even when we held a flame to it, and when struck with a hatchet, it simply gave a dullish sound and did not break. The small particles we bagged up and sold on the street, the value ended up being over two million dollars. It's a bright blue color. It was blue. <laughs> <laughs> Upon entering the barn, we were amazed as two good horses stood in their stalls, immovable. They were alive, but neither could move a muscle. They seemed to be paralyzed and stood there more like statues than anything else. 
They were warm and breathed all right, but aside from this, you could not tell they were alive. I applied the whip, well, oh. <laughs> and, and they never a... flinched. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say they were a tasty dessert treat. <laughs> Ooh, and was, Ooh, I applied the cool whip. The cool whip. I applied the whip, and they never flinched. A dog that sleeps in the barn was dead and appeared completely petrified. He was lying on the ground with his head on his paws just like he was sleeping. Poor puppy. When I left home this afternoon, everything was just as I have described to you. Wow. End of story. Tis so, crazy, sir. Now, okay, Snake, mm -hmm. granted, I'm thinking Farmer, what's his name? The uh, Burning Snake Farmer. <laughs> farmer Weston. Farmer Weston needed to... I'm thinking Farmer Weston grew something other than corn out on the old farm. Yeah, I think so, too. He was just big snake and he was on fire. But when you couldn't move when he was around, and instead of fire, he left ice. Yeah. Maybe, maybe something a little extra in his system. Some special crops that were hidden <laughs> by corn. No, honey, really. No, it was a snake and he was on fire. He was huge. He's, he's burning... You he know, was I, burning so that's, bad. That's why I'm late. I couldn't move because the burning snake <laughs> my, paralyzed my me. My clothes probably smell like burning snake and and probably burning baby. Because <laughs> he bur he he ran on that that high octane fuel. It smells uh, just like whiskey. He gets the stuff that Shell sells for a bunch of money. It has that, <laughs> uh, you know, nitrogen in it. It's rocket fuel. It is keeps his injectors clean. Yep, burning snake. So do you have another one for us, Jeff? I do, sir. Now that we've talked about the UTI story, this one is called <laughs> the Serpent of Horseshoe Pond. And if you see this serpent, you're not going to be lucky. Like a horseshoe would try to make you think you might so be. So it would be an upside-down horseshoe. Yeah, where all the luck fell out of it. Yeah. Yep. The Serpent of Horseshoe Pond, six miles south of Vincennes, which is in Indiana, <laughs> was 60 feet long, bigger and longer than a telephone pole, and it resembled a snake. But it had the head like that of large dog. Dog snake. That's how <laughs> Isaac Danes described what he had seen in the murky waters of Horseshoe Pond was in it, the April 22nd, 1892. Was he fuzzy and pink? Commercial. It doesn't say he was fuzzy and pink. He was a luck dragon. Why would he be pink? Falcor was white. No, Falcor was pink. No, Falcor was no, white, brother. pink. You look at that movie. I did. He's white. Pink. No, he's not. Pink. Maybe in the lights, he's pink. You know the same guy that voiced like Skeletor and Man at Arms in He Man Masters. If Universe you tell me he was the voice of Falcor, I'm going to hit you in the he head. The voice of Falcor. No lies. Who was also? Listen to me. No. Listen to. Where me. was my mute button? Murphy Brown's boss. Mute button. There. We've muted Chad You're because he's Murphy telling Brown. lies. Yeah, Murphy Brown's boss is Falcor. <laughs> Lies. Now he made and Falcor, the Luck Dragon. We will now allow Chad to rejoin the program. <clears throat> the newspaper described Danes as a highly respected farmer whose veracity cannot be questioned. Danes, his wife, hired men and neighbors, had all seen the creature on several occasions, Danes stated. Its color is black on the back and sides. It inhabits the water and does not seem to venture any distance on shore. It glides through the waters of the pond with that easy and graceful motion peculiar to a snake swimming. When approached, it becomes alarmed and swims away. If pursued, it flees with wonderful rapidity. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Like rainbows and bread. And unicorns. Dane said that he tried to kill the monster several times. Well, what a... I mean, didn't do nothing to him. Yeah, die. Like, hey, I hang out in this here pond. Stab you. Push you. <laughs> shoot you. The bullets seem to have no effect. Danes plan to collect a crowd of men armed with Winchesters to kill or capture the sea serpent. Evidently alarmed by this attention, the monster moves south. The June 17th, 1892 commercial reported that the sea serpent had been seen again by men of good repute for veracity. They like that word. This time in Big Swan Pond. Big Ten, Swan Pond. Big Swan. Oh. Ten miles south of Vincennes, the huge snake was still described as having the head of a dog colored white with a white throat, but its black back and sides <laughs> were now spotted or mottled red and yellow. So he disappeared for a while. Mm -hmm. got, a, got a little... He got, got his hair, little, hair got dyed so nobody work, would recognize little him. little work done. Mm -hmm. yep. Hair dyed. Probably yep. cut it a little bit. Yep. Showed up at a different pond. It was like, no, that wasn't me. Wore a different hat. 
I'm a different snake. Yeah. I'm much nicer. Oh, you <laughs> fools. Don't you know that that snake was wearing a Derbyshire and I've got a Bogney? I've got the Bogney hat. He was fools. evil. I'm polite. Mm, that's right. Pleasant to all the children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to give the kids candy and tell them stories. Spotted or mottled, red and yellow, like the side of a large water snake. Skeptics said it was only a large water moccasin of exaggerated size, but others said it was something else. No further sightings were ever reported of this strange serpent. You know, so far in these stories, for the most part, I'll say, in these stories, mm-hmm. it just sounds like you're finding like a big snake that people maybe exaggerate a little bit on, and then the snake is the victim. Yeah, I think so. Snake's just like, hey, I'm living in this pond, or hey, I'm mm-hmm. living at this place conveniently called Rattlesnake Bluff. Yeah. Why are you trying to kill me? <laughs> yep. Just kind of show up and... You know, people decide to freak out and kill the snake. I've been living here for years. This snake must be 500 years old. Kill Kill it. it. (laughs) He would make a very fine pair of boots. He would make a tasty stew and a fine belt for three large men. His oil will cure everything. Snake oil. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, Chad, for our last story of the unnaturally large snakes of Indiana. Yes, sir. We're talking about the Benton County Cemetery snake. Dun, dun, dun. And now this is one that I, uh, like I said earlier, I think in one of our previous shows we had mentioned this one, but I don't know how much detail we went into. Not a lot, but I do know the snake that you speak of. Yes. The Benton County Cemetery Snake. This terrifying snake story comes from Benton County and is told by the September 3rd, 1889 Lafayette Courier as follows. 1889? Marty! There is a larger snake, measuring 15 feet in length, as large in circumference as a good-sized stovepipe, with eyes of fire, adorned with horns underneath, fully 10 inches long. Wow. In the cemetery west of Oxford and Benton County. (laughs) Big old horny snake. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It has been seen by at least a dozen people, and the supposition is that it subsists by feasting upon the dead bodies interred therein. Hmm. Rumors of such a reptile inhabiting the city of the dead have been afloat for years, but until recently they have not been believed. A gentleman of Oxford, whose word was never known to be doubted, Mm -hmm. never, never, saw the snake the other day, and although he found and picked up a club, (laughs) he became frightened at its mammoth size, and instead of entering into battle with the snake, he took to his heels and, without looking back to see if it was after him, ran breathless to his home. I feel like a Dukes of Hazard episode covered the same thing and was <laughs> pinned quite the same way. About that time when old Bob picked up the club. <laughs> sure has been a long time since there's been a good giant snake clubbing. <laughs> At first, the man gave some excuse for his hurried, for this hurried and excited arrival, but at last he related his experience. There is a certain amount of distress among the citizens of Oxford who have relatives buried in the cemetery (laughs) over the general belief that the reptile is living upon the dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't eat Aunt Tilly. (laughs) (laughs) Don't be silly. But, um, the gentleman who informed the courier reporter this morning of the matter says that on investigation, there have been found large holes leading down into the graves. Mm Mm-hmm. It is with a feeling of horror accompanied with a shudder that the people of Oxford have learned of this unnatural being. Those who have seen it describe it as being of frightening appearance with its fiery eyes, horns, and mammoth size. None have seen it, but that at the first glimpse, their hair seemed to raise on their very heads. Mm-hmm. And their hearts to almost stop beating at the sight of the terrible creature. Devil snake. <laughs> Metallica's last album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rob Zombie. Devil Snake, Devil Snake. That's right. We talked about this before, him and his Devil Snake. That was another show. Oh, was it? This is completely different, so we can do it again. It's all all brand new. That's right. New board, new microphone. This is a whole different show. brand (laughs) new. So, crazy Devil Snake eating dead bodies. Dead people eating Devil Snake. Scaring guys with clubs. Yep. Well, yeah. (laughs) That one's a... That one's a lot of information on that snake. That is. He, yeah. He's a devil snake. Devil snake. He lives on dead bodies. He hangs out in the cemetery. Apparently is good at tunneling. He's good at tunneling. Because he can, he can find his way down into a 
He can get through grave. that wooden coffin. Yeah. I mean, he's probably got some carpentry skills. Sawtooth. <laughs> that was the sound that the people were terrified of when they'd walk past the cemetery at night. Yeah. They'd be walking down the road, winds blowing a little bit. And in the background, you'd hear... <laughs> Move along. There's nothing to see here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all all large all, snakes, all snakes sound exactly Cobra the same. Commander. We do. Yeah. They well, just, they just draw their s's out a little bit. That's right. We're eating the dead bodies. I prefer <laughs> this over this delicious turkey dinner. <laughs> what do you mean, there's raccoons? I hate <laughs> raccoons. That's a wild animal. Why? <laughs> I can have delicious human flesh. <laughs> My favorite show, of course, is. Sex in the city. <laughs> I don't think that was on in hmm. whenever you think no, like eighty nine. Not. Nazis were all in the SS. <laughs> Fortunately, other than no. Big Jim, there's not been any like sightings of large snakes in Indiana for a hundred years. I figured you would say that all these large snakes have been accredited to crazy Nazi experiments. Now <laughs> I was gonna try not to bring that up. <laughs> All those uh, Nazi scientists who settled in Indiana. But it's awfully weird that from late 1800s up to around 1920, 1930, you had mm. weird large snakes in Indiana. Yep. And then nothing. <sighs> Seems to me like there was a little bit of experimenting, yeah. maybe a little bit of espionage. Let's plant these large snakes in the United States. Nobody ever mentions What the, do you uh, say, Durfuhrer? <laughs> Nobody ever mentions those big swastika net neck bands that they all And then... <laughs> And then they went back to Germany around the 30s to report mm-hmm. on what they found. Germany fell, no snakes. Have, you and know. then in the, what was it, in 1980s, around the same time you started getting reports of skinheads and neo-Nazis, uh-huh. what do we get? Another big snake. You know, you know what? Nazi these... experiments. <laughs> well, okay, so all these snakes that yes. are giant. Giant. There could have been some that were combined with human DNA. So they still they they still feel like they should wear a little bit of clothing. So <laughs> yes. like if they're out in water, they wear a swim trunks. You know how stupid that looks when you're just hanging out one leg hole. <laughs> you know they've got the waist all pulled up tight with a string, and then it's just one side, and there's just one leg flapping. Snakes look. I dumb don't have the money trunks. to get these <laughs> altered. <laughs> Snakes look stupid in swim trunks, is what I'm trying to say. Well, they do. Yeah. And really, when you know when you don't have a waist. You're just one girth all the way down. How mm-hmm. do you how do you cinch up that drawstring without eat them a, falling down? Eat a pig. Is that what he would do? Yeah, just get it right there in the middle. That's you why the pigs are. The that's why the one snake ate the baby calf. Yeah, so he keep his drawers up. He had to eat something to keep his swim keep trunks his from swim falling trunks down. Up. See, it all makes sense. It does somewhere everything plugs in? They're just misunderstood. Yeah, I think I have a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean. <laughs> Let's wrap this hog up. <laughs> Welcome to a very special paranormal guy where we find out Chad's dying. Yeah, we like to call this the terminal episode. <laughs> Got to think of a new name for the show. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes. hey Chad, you know, speaking of uh, stories of snakes. Yes. If you would like to send us any stories of your own mm-hmm. or comments or suggestions of any type, you can email those to us right here at the good old show. Yeah. What's our email address, Chad? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that would be uh, something at some the domain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guys <laughs> at paranormalguys.com. There you go, because okay. we have an official new one now. If you'd we like, do. Uh, we have the guys at paranormalguys.com. See, I knew what it was. And as always, on the website, there is the form you can fill out, and that'll get us an email of mm-hmm. your stories, comments, suggestions, anything like that. And any listener stories would be certainly welcome, because we'd like to get a show together. I know I've been saying this a lot, but we need a lot of stories, because some people's stories aren't that long. Yeah, if you just say, hey, the other day I was driving down the road, and I think mm-hmm. I saw Bigfoot. That doesn't really, that's Can't not a lot of it. filler. Yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> want to listen to that, would you? Well, yeah. maybe you might. I mean... I don't know. I mean, you could say, ooh, they saw Bigfoot. But then after that, even the discussion's kind of like, well, where do you think they were driving? Yeah. How long did they see it? Did they see its face? Were they in the forest? Yeah. Did it have on pants? 
Was he black or brown? It probably wasn't Bigfoot if he wore pants. Was he Z- Zapruder footage Bigfoot? <laughs> I mean, wait. Uh-huh. Uh, Patterson Gimlin. <laughs> there you go. To the back, to the side. <laughs> to the back, to the to side. side. Anyway, yes. Send us stories. We would love to do a show filled with uh, listener stories. Mm-hmm. If you go to the website, which I hope you do, to fill out that email form, while you're there, you can also do all kinds of things like listen to the show. We have an awesome new pictures uh, section on the page, so you can see pictures of Chad with random people, pictures of me with my awesome headphones, pictures of the various studios we moved around to in my basement, Mm -hmm. and Steve. Yeah, good old Steve. And if you know who Steve is, that's awesome. If not, you got to look at the website to find out who Steve is. Steve's pretty cool. Because I ain't telling you. Steve's out of this world. There is a little forum on there. You can also sign up via email to get notifications when new shows drop. And there is a little uh, page to donate. And why would you want to donate to the show, Chad? Uh, Because, well, we are not being paid by some large, faceless corporate sponsor. This is a non-for-profit organization. That's right. We actually fuel this machine ourselves, and (laughs) if you'd like to help add a little gas money to it, well, we'd be happy. The Pong War Machine. That's right. Anything would be much appreciated. This is true. And, don't forget... It also helps us fund things like those awesome free decals that you can get. That is right. We have some of those awesome free decals left. And if you'd like one of those, just shoot us an email. Tell us your name and address, and we will send a few of those out to you. And we pay shipping. That's our gift to you. Yeah, no the self-addressed. Pongite, the Pongite Nation. No self-addressed stamped envelopes are necessary. That's right. We like to give. We do. And earlier in the show, we were talking about doing some of those uh, live streaming videos on Facebook, perhaps next weekend from the uh, Mothman Festival. So one good thing to do would be to like our Facebook page, because that way you'll get an instant notification of one of those live streaming awesome videos that we do. Yep. Also, it's another way to get notification of when the new shows drop. And you'll want to know when those new shows drop. That's right. Keep <laughs> your finger on the pulse. That's right. And while you're on Facebook liking the old Paranormal Guys uh, page, head on over to William Blanchard's Facebook page at facebook.com slash William Blanchard Soundtrack. He's the guy that does all the music for the Paranormal Guys Paranormal Podcast. Musical genius. He is. Mm -hmm. Musical genius. Certified by Chad and myself. That's true. And if you're listening to the show, Mr. Blanchard, you can use that as an endorsement. I believe it will go far. But anyway, Chad, I believe that wraps up another exciting episode of Paranormal Guys. It's like we've reached the end of this snake. But what if he's got his own tail in his mouth? Then this is the show that never ends. Great. It goes on and on, my friend. Mm. Some people started recording it, not knowing what it was. And I guess they'll keep on recording it just because this is the show that never ends. No. We can do this forever. No. Or... You can get lucky. And I'll say, Chad, yes. Pongite Nation, True. have a pair of normal weeks. Had to pull a piece of Christmas tinsel out of his neck. Uh, <laughs> He's dying. He's not breathing. I gave him mouth to mouth. Came up, looked like I've been sucking on a cup of snack pack pudding. And he's still dying. He didn't make it. <laughs>